Yay. 45 of these weeks we've done, or 44 of these weeks we've done. This will be week number 45. Wow. That's a bunch. We've already been through one cocktail class today. I took a Museum of Distilled Spirits uh, French 75. Class on, on the Gin history versus of the, cognac. History of the French 75. Yeah. Which they know they knew far more about the history of the cocktail than uh, than I certainly did. But I, less about the but less about history. Right, yeah, but less about the actual artillery piece, which yeah. you know that's that, but it was uh, yeah, the Gin fun. Girl from St. Louis. Yep, who introduced us to Sip Smith. And Carrie, who is the ambassador for Sip Smith. Right. Right. Were they together? They were SNR? together at SNR, SNR. Yeah. last year before yep. the shutdown. Yeah. So that was that so, was kind of fun. Oh yeah. no, I did not, in fact, cut all my hair off. Sorry about that. It was just shoved up underneath the hat. Uh, there we go. Hey, we have people. Excellent. We do have people. We have four. We have, we have Keith. Keith. Look at that, Keith. Do you see that? You see Keith what that is? Keith can comment. Keith is commenting. He is out of Facebook jail. The ban hammer is is relieved. Congratulations, for, Keith. For now, for now, yes. And we have a Dave, who is he's been watching since I started talking. Was that forty four episodes ago or just this episode? Because <laughs> if you've been watching me since we started, well, more power to you, and I owe you some rum probably yeah uh, dave's known us for a while dave dave has known us much for a while. longer than keith who just flora is on while. excellent and, hey, and, 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 and colleen keith. is on yep yeah. so what are we going to do this evening well we're going to drink some duh i i got a head start yeah she definitely got a head start and drinking other things besides rum yeah i was yes. drinking gin and coke gin and coke, gin and coke. <laughs> gin and coke. Mm hmm And? Bubbles. Bubbles. Prosecco. Right. French so, 75. Right. So, uh, class on the French 75, its history, its origins as the drink called the 75, which did not yeah. include any bubbles. No. And, and uh, Museum of uh, Distilled Spirits is going to be doing a gin 101 class. Much like the much like the rum one hundred and one class that they are currently yeah. involved in, although we are two classes, two classes, two classes in. Into yeah. that. I'm There's... only doing one one hundred and one class at a time because they're intense, but I'm the gen one is after the rum one stops. Well, so. and we know more about the rum one than, than we know about gin, so gin would be a good one yeah. for us. Yeah. Yes, but they're also doing a whiskey right. and so, a tequila. So, what are we doing this week? What are we doing tonight? tonight? Tonight we're doing Mai Tais. So, um, Lovecraft Cocktails, I posted an article on Punch uh, earlier in the week. And that article talked a little bit about the evolution of the cocktail, the Mai Tai, as it's expressed at Lost Lake, which is the, the one major tiki bar in Chicagoland area that I haven't been to. I've been to most of the others. I made it to Trader Vic's, I've made it to Three Yachts and a Dash on a couple of occasions. I have not had the opportunity to make it to Lost Lake, but the Lost Lake talked, to, they had one of the head bartenders from Lost Lake, and they talked about their original envisionment of the Mai Tai and anything that would interfere with them knocking out lots of Mai Tais, because it's a tiki bar, Mai Tai, for a variety of different reasons. I think they wanted to up their game on their Mai Tai. They didn't want anything that would interfere with them knocking out lots of Mai Tais because it's a tiki bar. Mai Tais constantly flowing at tiki bars. So as a consequence, their first recipe was very bartender friendly in terms of getting a cocktail out quick there and quickly. Yeah. So what we thought we would do is we would follow them a little bit and their evolution of their cocktail, the Mai Tai. We're not going to do variations of the Mai Tai. Like we're not going to do a you know, a peach Mai Tai or something. No, we're going to keep to the basic recipe for a Mai Tai. We are going to use slightly different techniques for putting it together, and we are going to change up the rum component. And that's all we're going to change on the Mai Tai. And the plan is to do four of these guys this evening. So we'll see how we'll see how that goes. But we're going to start with the toast. We're, we're going to start with the toast. And I chose the rum that we are drinking for a particular reason. Oh, actually, okay. there, was, there was a reason for this. So this rum is, I just put it away. It's from Lost Spirits. Lost Spirits is a distillery out of California. And they're taking a very scientific approach to their rum making. Not that other distilleries don't. 
but they're applying technology to get after certain flavor profiles and using technology to get there in ways faster than waiting, say, 17 years for a bottle of Ray and Nephew 17. So uh, this is the Lost Spirits... Why point that at the laptop? This is Lost Spirits. It's a gorgeous little label. Uh, yes, we are drinking a little hefty rum here. This is a 61% alcohol. They use a custom patented process for aging their rum and aging it in a very short time span using agitation and chemistry and stuff and things. But blending, uh, doing that so that they get the exact flavor profile, chemical flavor profile that they want. And that's an important thing when talking about the Mai Tai. Why? Because, well, the Mai Tai, the Mai Tai is legendary for the rum that was involved in the very first Mai Tais. And that rum is the Ray and Nephew 17. It has not been made for decades. I think they actually ran out of Ray and Nephew within two years of the original cocktail and had to drop back to a Ray and Nephew either 15 or 12. And then from that point on, people have been chasing this magical Ray and Nephew 17 elixir. It tends to be that in order to create that wondrous elixir that very few people on the planet have tasted, that people have taken to combining an aged Jamaican rum, a very dark Jamaican funky rum, with an, still an aged, but an aged rum agricole from Martinique or some other French territory, in which case it's not an agricole, but we don't need to get into that, but essentially a rum that is made from the sugarcane juice and marry that with a rum that is made um, in the Jamaican style in order to get a flavor profile that is somewhat presumably similar to the Ray and Nephew 17. That said, if you've never tasted Ray and Nephew 17, that would be me and the vast majority of people on the planet, you have no idea what the Ray and Nephew 17 tastes like. So we're going to embark upon a journey here of coming up with a, no, it's not even coming up with, we're just going to play around with different rum mixes and see what we can come up with in terms of the Mai Tai. So let's get into it. Um, you have a Bonita and a Jeff Cox. Jeff and Bonito, welcome. Bonita, sorry. Um, welcome. We're drinking Lost Spirits at the moment. I need to get some of that into me. I'm still staggering around from drinking a couple of French 75s this afternoon. For whatever reason, bubbly, bubbly hits me harder than it really should. So I don't, I don't know why. So if I misstumble, misstumble, misstate, stumble, whatever, it's the French 75s. Oh, mm, oh, that is tasty and lovely. Okay, so what is, what is a Mai Tai? The original 1944 Mai Tai has two ounces of rum, and those two ounces would have been the Ray Nephew 17. It has a, either a half ounce of Orgeat or a quarter ounce of Orgeat and a quarter ounce of simple syrup. We are going to go with a half ounce of Orgeat. Half ounce of orange curacao, and here we are going to use the uh, Pierre Ferrand dry curacao instead of a triple sec or something else along those lines, and then one ounce of lime. So everything is going to remain the same in terms of those components except for the rum components. And what we're going to start with is the Lost Lake version as they, or at least as close as I can come with the rums that I have on hand, to what they did originally. I said earlier that they wanted to make this a very bartender-friendly drink and they were concerned about volume. As a consequence, they didn't want to take the time to shake the cocktail, and therefore they went with a Mai Tai that was blended. I know, seems weird because nobody blends their Mai Tais. That's weird. But we're going to go with that. We're going to start on a safe spot. So we need a half ounce of Orgeat. Whose Orgeat are we using? Well, of course, we're using homemade Orgeat. Duh. Still gorgeous. Okay. Half ounce. Doop, 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 doop. Half ounce. There we go. Nice and thick. This is a almost two to one, not quite two to one Orgeat. 
and it has a little gum arabic in it to th excuse me some xanthan gum in it in order to thicken it up and emulsify it and keep it from separating it still separates a little over time so you have to be a little careful about it shake it up before you use it going full ounce of lime juice and once again, you'll note that I am I have poured my thick syrupy ingredient first, and then I'm going with the acid afterwards because it will help clear out the jigger. Look at that, there we go. We need a half ounce dry curacao, which, once again, I forgot to check the bottle on the dry curacao. I checked uh, the Orjac because I thought that one would stick. Turns out it's the orange curacao that's sticking. I will need to wipe that bottle down. Okay, half ounce. Half ounce. If you happen to be a member of any one of the various tiki boards, Facebook groups that talk tiki, tiki cocktails, tiki land, anything along those lines, invariably there's an open discussion of what rums to use and what makes the best Mai Tai. The best Mai Tai is the Mai Tai that you are drinking right now that you like. So there. Shouldn't, should not be pink. That's yeah. that's my rule. Mai Tai should not be pink. All right. David uh, and Chris are drinking mojitos made with plantation dark rum. That'll work. That'll work. Lime juice, orange curacao, orgeat, two rums. In this case, we are going with what Lost Lake did originally, which is a split between Appleton Estate Reserve Blend reserve blend because there's a, a Jamaican, a quote unquote dark Jamaican goes into this, and then a rum agricole. And they mentioned a Duquesne rum agricole. I do not have the same rum agricole from Duquesne that they were using, but I do have another Duquesne rum agricole. So we're going to go ahead and use that. And that's an even split. So we're going to go one ounce, the rum agricole from Duquesne. There we go. And then one ounce of the Appleton Signature. Now, I like Appleton Signature. Oh, and I just realized I have a cut on my finger. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> oh, that wonderful combination of lime and alcohol pouring into a cut. Yay. So as I was saying, I like the Appleton Estate Reserve Blend. Perfectly reasonable, good rum. It lacks... The, the Jamaican funk, though. I mean, there's, there's not a real solid punch of Jamaican funk there. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be skeptical about this one because I really think for my tastes that I really want to have a little bit of that funk coming through on my Mai Tai. And if I don't, then it feels like something's missing from the drink. Crushed ice. We're going to go with a single scoop crushed ice. Stick that under our spindle blender, and they dutifully provided us with how long they blended it in, in that article. They said four to five seconds, so. And then you can just do a dirty pour of this. Uh, what glass should we use? Let's use this one. So this is, this is a typical Mai Tai or double rocks glass. And we got this from one of our Mug Crate offerings. Sadly, Mug Crate is no longer doing offerings, but uh, this was one of our mugs. It looks very nice. It's sort of a purple, blue, pink mixture. And so we've got some ice in here. That all goes in. The classic garnish for Mai Tai. Anybody? Anybody know? Anybody? Bueller? Well, first of all, we have to top this off. No more crushed ice. Okay, so the classic Mai Tai garnish is a half, an expended half of a lime wheel or half of a lime. So once you've crushed your lime to get juice out of it, there you go. You've got this nice half lime that goes right in there along with a sprig of mint. So I happen to have some mint sprigs right here. Yes, David, get ready because we're going to do some mint spanking. Woohoo. Let's wave that around the top. Stick that right in there like such. Do that again with another. These are pretty sparse on their leaves, but they are nice and bright and big mint leaves. So we're hoping to get some nice smell off of that. 
Stick a straw in there. Surfside Sips, we love you. That goes right in there. And there you have it. This is as close as I can come to the Mai Tai that was originally served at Lost Lake. Bear in mind, never having had their Mai Tai and only going off of what I know from that one article, this is a Lost Lake original Mai Tai. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Ruth likes your shirt. Thank you, thank you, Ruth. Liking the shirt, yay. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's I've not. I had much it's, better it's not my brilliant. ties, but I wouldn't send it back. I, if I had gotten that from Lost Lake, I think I would have been disappointed, but only because. Lost Lake is built up in my mind. Mm, um, I can see that. The the folks that did but Lost Lake. But if you Lake, were to get this at a just opening tiki bar. Yeah, I got this at like if when this we had, first went to tiki, tiki on eighteenth. Yeah, that, I would be like, sure. So there you have. There's there's a mai tai, according to near as I can tell, how Lost Lake used to do their mai tais. Um, you could easily do that. You could see in large batches sticking under the uh the actually you just have it as a punch and then pour it in throw some ice in there stick it under the spindle blender you could knock these things out all night really really quickly easily enough okay that's not the mai tai that they are serving today so the mai tai that they are serving today uses a combination of rums and they use oh, i have to double check Right, they do use a slightly overproof rum agricole. And I happen to have a slightly overproof rum agricole. We are going to use La Favorite. I think, that if I remember right, I think La Favorite is in fact the brand that they use, but they may use a different version of La Favorite for their rum agricole component. They have moved away from the Appleton Estate Reserve Blend and they now do a split for their Jamaican rum. So the first thing that they do is they use, where is it? I've got it here. The rum that was created for Mai Tais. So a bunch of people had their hands in this, and this is a plantation. It is the plantation Jamaica. It is a dry uh, Jamaican-style rum that was created by some of the movers and shakers in the tiki world having input into this, and it was largely intended as a significant ingredient in Mai Tais. So there you go, um, the Zameka. But it's not just the Zameka. They wanted to kick it up just another tad. And so they also use a little bit of the Smith & Cross. Smith & Cross is an overproof at 57% alcohol, but also a traditional Jamaican style rum. Although Smith & Cross is out of London, which means they're blending as opposed to like coming off of a single pot still or something along those lines. They also decided to move away from using the blender. They decided that shaking doesn't take actually that much time, and they weren't doing that many of the Mai Tais where they needed to make use of the blender. So they went back to shaking. As it turns out, there was a, a revolution in shaking while they were coming up with this next uh, attempt at the Mai Tai, and that evolution of shaking was what do you do with your lime rind? So traditionally, the lime rind goes in at the end as a garnish. They said, well, wait a second. What about doing the so-called regal shake, which includes the lime wedge or the, the lime half in the cocktail shaker? And as the ice thrashes around, it bruises up the lime and expresses out some of the additional lime oils from the husk. So that's what we're going to do now. We are going to do that version of the Mai Tai, and we're just going to go ahead and grab a container like this, and let's start this up. We are going to go with same proportions, half ounce or shot. Am I getting better at this whole holding the jigger steady? It seems like I'm getting better at making sure that I've got a finger under here to hold things steady Seems like I may be overfilling the jiggers on occasion and tripping a little that way, but 
but I think I'm getting more of more of my ingredients actually into my shaker. What do you know? It's always a good thing to do. So full ounce of lime juice. All right, like such. There we go. And then we need the orange curacao. Again, half ounce. Can you guys hear the music? And do you like it? I'm digging it. This is a custom tiki mix, tiki and surf music mix off of Pandora. Uh, Pandora makes it really, really easy for me to make custom stations that I can, well, customize to whatever blend of tiki, Cuban, steel drum, Polynesia, Hawaiian music that I want. So that's all, that's all well and good. I got the lime juice. I got the orange curacao. I got the orgeat. Time for some rum. Okay, we're going to go with a half ounce of the Plantation Zameka. And we go. We're going to go with a half ounce of the Smith and Cross. So you'll note this is a significantly higher alcohol content version because everything else is staying in the same proportions and we're adding two different rums that are overproof here. Smith and Cross is over there. And then we're going to add the La Favorite. So it was a half ounce of each of those, so a full ounce of the La Favorite. I I'm, I'm leery about this. I think the La Favorite is going to overpower this. I've had this in cocktails and just find that it is, it is hard to tame. It's not that high a proof. It's only 50%, but it just has a very, very distinctive flavor to it. We're going to add our lime. That goes in there. Scoop of ice. Crushed ice. Holly noticed the uh, James Bond music. Ah, uh, yes. For some reason, the James Bond themes, the various James Bond themes, show up a lot in Tiki or Exotica. It's that, it's that particular style of jazz that just seems to... it fits. And occasionally, if you listen long enough, you'll probably wind up with some of the more recent, like, um, soundtracks off of, uh, like, songs from the soundtrack to Skyfall and that sort of thing. Shaken with lime husk in the shaker. All right, let's give it a show. Sounds good to me. I can tell we're getting a little change in the ice. Because I can hear it as it's dissolving. We don't want it to dissolve entirely. I need a glass of water here. Hold on. We're just going to dump that. We're going to dump that into an Archipelago glass. Archipelago is our local Washington, D.C. tiki bar that we love and have not been to in way too long. Okay. Just an ugly dump right in there. We are going to... What are we going to do? We're going to add some more ice to that. Wow. Bring that up to a wash line. The lime husk is stuck in there. We need some mint for that. Now you could, if you wanted the lime to be more prominent, you could easily just drop another lime husk there so that it was more visible. We're gonna smack this around. Rub that around our cocktail. Why do you rub the mint around in the cocktail? Well, what you've done by smacking it around is you've broken some of the cell walls on the leaves, and now the oil is coming up, and you want to express that oil around the top of the glass so you get a little bit of the mint oil when you take a taste of it. There we go. This is as close as I can come, again, from just the very little reading that I have done and not having had a Lost Lake Mai Tai the current version of the Lost Lake Mai Tai. I'm going to stick a straw in there. 
What do you know? Surfside sips. I'm going to be hearing that one a lot. Okay, let's give this a show. What do you know? I smell mint. There is a reason that the bartenders and bar staff at Lost Lake are professionals and get paid to do this. And I Damn, just... Damn, that's good. Yeah, and I just hack around here. There is no compare... I mean, there is comparison. Obviously, I'm just doing it between that first drink and this one. This is a Mai Tai. This, the other yeah. one was fine. I'm okay with that. This one, I'm like, oh, that's, oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice Mai Tai. That's a really good Mai Tai. I, I like that. That's, that's quite... That's quite, quite. Yep. I'd, I'd certainly get a little bit of the the funk off the Jamaican rum. And oddly enough, I'm, despite the fact there's a full ounce of 50% La Favorite in there, it doesn't overpower the cocktail. I'm, I'm a little stunned. The guys over there know what they're doing. Wow. Very cool. This is yummy. I mean, not that the other drink wasn't yummy, but this is just, it's yummier. So there you go. There's two Mai Tais. One represents the early days of Lost Lake. One represents a more contemporary version of Lost Lake's Mai Tai. Same recipe, slightly different technique, and swapping out different rums. All right. It also represents, I think, I would say, a change in the consumer base as well. Because Let's just say that the Tiki consumers today are a little more discerning than, say, the Tiki consumers when Lost Lake first opened, which was, oof, uh, er, I want to say it's in the early 2000s, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. It might be later than that. My, my lovely wife is going to check on that for me, I am sure, because she has a computer right there. We have internet access. She can tell us when Lost Lake opened. But they've been open for a while. And, and my guess is that the, the Tiki consumer base has, in fact, evolved and become a little more discerning. And therefore, that uh, that second Mai Tai, that's, that's quite lovely. Quite, quite lovely. 2015. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. Uh, she, she has informed me that Lost Lake didn't open until 2015, which means they're only six years old and a year of that has been COVID. Wow. You know, Smuggler's Cove is either coming out or hitting stride at that point. So maybe, maybe. So maybe it has nothing to do with a, a more discerning cheeky customer base. Maybe it does. I don't know. That's a better Mai Tai than the first one. So Dave informs us that he is drinking out of a turtle Surfside Sips uh, straw. So You've seen me show off this before, which is a Surfside Sip straw with, yes, with the cutest little octopus on it. Dave has one that has a turtle on it instead. And I'm sure you can get other animals. If I can just get a kaiju on there, you know, that would be awesome. We'll have to, we'll have to talk with them, see if that's, that's possible. That's it. That's all we're going to do for Lost Like Mai Tais. Now we're going to play around and do some Mai Tais and Mai Tai work that, that I've done here at the home bar on a couple of occasions. Including, as Lost Lake points out, they have a higher end, an even higher end Mai Tai on, on their menu. And uh, if their usual Mai Tai is 16, I believe their special Mai Tai is something like 40. I mean, this, this is a pricey, pricey Mai Tai. Not this one. No, no. This is the $16, currently the $16 one. The $40 one, specialty stuff. So we are going to do what I would consider sort of a standard Mai Tai here at the home Lovecraft bar. And then we're going to zhuzh it up and we're going to do what I would consider the equivalent of my $40 Mai Tai, my high-end Mai Tai. And we'll see how that works out. And I could... It, it could be a horrible, horrible experiment. It could go completely haywire, in which case I'm going to use some really expensive rum to make a bad cocktail. But we're hoping that doesn't happen. So, you say, hey, Pooch, when you're talking about rums and mixing rums and putting different rums in a cocktail, 
how the heck would I know what rum to put in a cocktail? And what are the differences between different rums? And can I just look at a bottle and have it tell me something that will be an indicator of what I need to know about that rum? Well, now, I just finished reading this. This is the uh, Rum Curious um, by Fred Minnick. And the forward to this is actually written by Martin Kate, who wrote Smuggler's Cove. So if Martin is saying, yeah, this is a good guy, he knows his rum stuff, then you can guess that Mr. Minnick is, well, knows his rum stuff. And he does. And the last portion... So this book, unlike many, many books that are sort of the history of rum, I mean, there's the obligatory chapter on the history of rum, because you, you can't write a rum book without it. And there are other books that take you through sort of distillery by distillery or geographic locale by geographic locale on different rums and tell you things about the distilleries. Minnick's perspective is more about how the rum is made and the various guidelines and regulations about rum and how that all plays out and what some of the controversies are currently within the rum community, particularly the add, uh, additives for rum just before rum goes in the bottle or occasionally before so sometimes what they will do is they will pull rum they will blend it they will put additives in it and they will throw it back into a barrel and then that barrel will be aged another couple of years and that's what gets bottled and so he goes through all of that and talks about some of the major figures currently within the the rum community and then the back what quarter of the book are well there is a small section on cocktails which you know, frankly, is you probably have all access to all of those cocktails. But there is a section in here, if I can neatly block it out. Do, 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 right. So this section of the book, right here, this section, this is all of his tasting notes of major rums. And th this is a really nice set uh, of notes, including a you know, usual 1 to 100 scale, and this will tell you something about his taste. Anything that scores over a 90, he also gives you a cigar recommendation to go with the rum. Because anything that's over a 90, he says, you, sh you should be sipping. You should not be making cocktails with. Um, you know, it's your rum. If it scores over a 90 and you've spent the money on it and you want to make a cocktail with it, go right ahead. I know that's what I'm going to do for the last cocktail this evening. So... I heartily recommend Fred Minnick's Rum Curious. If, in fact, you are Rum Curious, this is a good book for you. So there you go, Rum Curious. I am taking a break here because I still have my Mai Tai in front of me. We will move on, I promise. But before I do that, we usually have, well, in the past, we have had some segment of what did I learn or what new thing has Pooch got for the bar? Well, I got a new Tiki mug because it happens. You, you're scrolling through eBay and you go, ooh, take my money. Etsy. In this case, it was Etsy. That's right. So uh, the bar's name is Lovecraft Cocktails. The Facebook page is called Lovecraft Cocktails. The Instagram is called Lovecraft Cocktails. As a consequence, uh, I have a lot of HP Lovecraft themed mugs and now I have a new one. So this, this comes to us from a small group of people producing mugs in Russia, of all places. Who knew? Uh, they're probably more into Dostoevsky than they are into H.P. Lovecraft, but hey, Kin what the heck. Kin Pottery. Kin Pottery, I think is the name of the... The wife says, yes, it is Kin Pottery. You cannot tell that from the signature that is on the bottom of this. I believe that's the artist and not just Kin Pottery. Yeah, I have no idea. No clue. But... You know, here is the back of the mug. Right, look at the glaze on that and the gorgeous colors. These tentacles there. Inside of the mug is just deep, deep black. It's a matte black. And here's your front end. Right? Look at that. Is that not awesome? That's totally cool. This, this is an awesome addition to the... Now, the I will say that this is not a very thickly walled tiki mug. It's not particular. I mean, it's not wafer thin... But this is not a heavy mug for its size. But the coloration is just so cool, and the design is cool. So I had to have it. And now I do. But you don't put Mai Tais in mugs like that. You put Mai Tais in mugs like 
this. And this is the next mug that we are going to use for making our next Mai Tai. And what do you know? This says the shores of Carcosa from horrorandclay.com, uh, which is yet another purveyor of fine Lovecraftian themed mugs and glassware. Shores of Carcosa is referenced actually. So Carcosa is mentioned several times in the Lovecraft mythos, but is actually more closely aligned with the King in Yellow. And I, I do not remember the author of the set of short stories which surrounds the King in Yellow, but he has been connected with the, the greater Cthulhu mythos. Uh, you can see the tentacles and that sort of thing. Uh, connected with uh, the King in Yellow and Hastor and that sort of thing. That's what we're going to make our next Mai Tai in. And so this would be sort of a, a typical Mai Tai that I would do around here. If you were to come over to the place and... Robert W. Chambers. Robert W. Chambers. Yes, Robert W. Chambers. A lot of Lovecraft stuff was apparently influenced some by Chambers. So there you go. Um, it also happens to be my favorite faction to play in Cthulhu Wars. If you happen to be in board ga into board gaming, but that's, yeah, that's my thing. Okay, uh, the rum, the, the rum, the, uh, stop, pause, hello, reset, take another drink. For this Mai Tai, we are going to shake this Mai Tai because I'm f of the firm belief that, well, that's what you should do with Mai Tais, so shake them. We're going to follow the same pattern. So we're going to go a half ounce orgeat. Right there. So I had the occasion today to watch a number of episodes of one of my favorite YouTube channels, which is How to Drink with Greg something or other. I have no idea what Greg's last name is, but he's the host of How to Drink. And he was doing a like retrospective of 2018. And one of the things that he did was a retrospective of him spilling drink ingredients all over the place. So I have spilling drink ingredients on my brain. That was a full ounce of lime juice, by the way. Half ounce orange curacao. Half ounce orange curacao. Obviously, you could play around with different curacaos and triple secs, an orange liqueur of some sort. You could use Grand Marnier. You might want to cut back on the sweetness component if you're going to do that. You could use a commercial triple sec if you wanted. Lime juice, orange curacao, orgeat. Good, we're at the rums. Okay, so what are we going to do for rums for my house? Okay. My traditional rum agricole, aged rum agricole for this is this guy, is the Clement VSOP. This is just, I can get this. It's not, it's not break the bank expensive. I, I really like it for a very nice, it's not top end, but it's a little higher end agricole than you might normally use for a mixed drink getting pretty choosy about the mugs that, that I pick up. We are getting a little short on mug space. We have an entire Barrister's bookcase that is filled with this tiki mugs. And it used to be that I had not really a rule against just going out and buying tiki mugs, but I wanted to make sure that there was still space for all of the mugs that we would get when we would go to various tiki bars and get their signature mug. We haven't been going to tiki bars, so we haven't been getting their signature mugs, and people have been sitting at home or at their pottery places, kilns, studios. Studio, that's the word I'm looking for. Their pottery studios whipping out great mugs. So we bought a bunch of mugs recently. Okay, I'm going to make everyone year. seasick. Oh, Star's going to make people seasick. Oh, she's going to go look at the, the Barrister bookcase. There it is. Four shelves. So the upper shelf, this shelf is almost all Lovecraftian or monster themed. This shelf is heavily influenced by Geek Tiki, so Star Wars, Guardians of the Galaxy, and various other mugs of their ilk. The cereal there, there's, there's the Jaguar mug that we have. There's the cereal monsters. You know the cereal monsters, right? Like Booberry 
and Frankenberry and, and those sorts of things, right? Uh, Count Chocula, those mugs, those are all back there. This is reserved for, for the most part, for mugs from places that we have been, although not this guy, but we got him because he was cool, and not this guy. But, it, but largely that shelf is devoted to mugs from places that we have been. This is a little bit of, down here is some overflow. There's some mug crate stuff. There's some mugs we've traded. There's some mugs we've picked up. This, this mug right here, we picked up the uh, secondhand store wandering through the French Quarter in New Orleans, as you do. And there's some generic mugs down there as well. Also, behind the bar, we have a bunch of generic, sort of generic, generic tiki mugs. Other mugs that people have given us, I tend to keep here behind the bar so that I can reach for them. So we have mugs from Becca, who did, you know these guys, right? I've shown off these guys before. Becca made these for us. And I also have the mugs that Zach and Amy sent us they have, that are under here, but they're under here and behind something, so I'm not going to reach down and go get them. What I need to do to this is add rum to it, and I've been distracted, but I know everything else is in here, right? Lime, yes. Orange curacao, yes. Orjot, yes. I'm out of breath. Why am I out of breath? I don't know. Wait, I put the, I put part of the rum in here, didn't I? Yes. Okay, I put the rum agricole in. I put the Clement VSOP. So all I'm missing is the Jamaican. Here's where I go off book at the home bar. While the Clement VSOP is pretty standard for all of my Mai Tais, what I use for the Jamaican rum varies all over the place. If I'm just cranking out a bunch of Mai Tais, and I don't want to split the Jamaican base, I will often just use this. I will reach for the OFTD, so this is an overproof at 69%. Again, this is, this is a rum that people in the tiki world had a hand in making. So there's Jeff Berry and Martin Kate, Mr. McFadden, uh, one of the bartenders, Mr. McGee from Lost Lake, David Wondrich, etc. all had a hand in making this rum. And it's not necessarily a true Jamaican rum, but it, it, it does a very, very nice job. It is a blend of what is this, Jamaican, Guyana, Barbados, three different types of rum. So I will often just do a single shot, single shot, one ounce of the OFTD. So there we go. And there's your two ounces of, of rum in that cocktail. We'll do the same thing that we've done before, once before at this point, which is we're going to put a scoop of ice in here and then we're going to shake it. One scoop, crushed ice. Lit it up, shake, I forgot, we're going to do this the way Lost Lake does and drop the uh, lime husk in there, come back to this, shake some more. Drink and shake. Two hands. Y'all get real excited if I'm doing two Mai Tais at the same time and bending down and drinking the Mai Tai I have in front of me, huh? That'd be cool to see. Shores of Carcosa glass. Dirty pour, straight in. A little darker color than this one because of the OFTD. Again, we're going to top off a little crushed ice, add some mint, yo spanky, this is a nice, this is a nice little sprig of mint, nice good smack on there, just run this around, uh, there are people that just waft it over the top, I like to just do something along those lines, stick that in there. This is a home cocktail, so we're going to go with a different color of Surfside Sips straw. That's going to go in there. We've got a cam. 
We've got a cam. Oh, we've, right, cam. Right. We've Hi. got a Corey and Chia. She said we've got a cam, and I'm like, of course we've got a cam. It's right there. The cam. No. It's like Camilla. Camilla. Hi, Corey and Chia. You said yeah. We're online. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I know there's a passel of you out there that aren't commenting as well. Please do let us know you're on or not. Whatever you don't, you can lurk. It's okay. Tangier, a little tart. I like that. That's good because I make those. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So here's the. Uh, it's a little watered down, obviously, because it's been sitting there for a while. Those are on a par with each other. Yeah, so, they are. Yeah. I like yours better. Oh, yeah, baby. Woohoo. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Pooch, which of these is closer to the real Mai Tai, the Ray and Nephew 17 year old Mai Tai? I don't know. I've never had Ray and Nephew 17. I Chances are very, very, very high. I will never have a, a taste of the Ray and Nephew 17. And frankly, my palate isn't sensitive enough that I could taste the Ray and Nephew 17 and go, oh, right, what I need to do is combine this rum, this rum, and this rum in order to get that exact flavor profile. And, well, frankly, somebody might be making a Jamaican rum out there and aging it for 17 years and claiming that it's just the same as the Ray and Nephew 17. If that's actually true, I am not paying that amount of money for that rum and then throwing it in a cocktail. It ain't happening. 17 year old rum, I'm sitting there and sipping. So, speaking of which, Lost Lakes. That's why I have some high hopes for Lost Lake because while they might not age their rum for 17 years, they'll use a chemical process to liken it to being aged for 17 years. And if they have a sample of the Rain Nephew 17, they can chemically match it, which that would be, you know, that's just way yeah, cool. the last auction price. Oh, Star's, Star's going to uh, explain to us just exactly how expensive the Ray and Nephew 17 is. Yes, hon, what was the last auction price for a bottle of Ray and Nephew 17? $52,000. Anybody have a spare 52 grand lying around? I mean, that was the last auction price. So let's 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 be on the safe side. 55 grand? Should we all go in together? You know, 100 of us and we each get you know, a dram <laughs> taste of the no. We're not doing that. The the Lost Lake, the Lost Lake Mai Tai, that was a darn good Mai Tai. The Mai Tai made with the OFTD and the Clement VSOP, darn good Mai Tai. Which of those is closer to the original? I don't know. I don't care. I like the flavor profile of these rums together with these ingredients. That's a Mai Tai. Now, you do get weird, right? I'm, somebody could put, oh, instead of Jamaican rum, I'm going to go with the Kraken. And then I want to, instead of an Agricole, I will use a Clarion for that. Well, first of all, Blending the Kraken with the Clarin is just a crime against humanity. Don't do that. And I would probably tell you that the flavor profiles, especially coming off of the Kraken, are not going to be... You would drink that and go, that's not a Mai Tai. This is a spiced rum cocktail. It's not a Mai Tai. Both the one that I made for Star, <laughs> i.e. my home cocktail, and this one from Lost Lake are clearly Mai Tais. There's no getting around it. The flavor profiles are different. But they're in the Mai Tai family, certainly. Neither one is pink. That's still pretty good. The, the La Favorite in that comes through more as the drink gets more diluted. And you don't get quite as much agricole off of my home, uh, I'm, my home version. Not in 2020, but in, I believe it was 2019, there was a month where I got deluged with email from people going, Hey, did you hear? Did you hear? And I, th I think it was Applebee's. I think it was Applebee's. It might have been like TGI Fridays, but I think it was Applebee's. And Applebee's was doing a cocktail of the month. And their cocktails, the cocktail of the month was a buck. And so you go in, you'd order this cocktail, it only cost you a buck. And the reason I was getting all this email was because for whatever month it was, 
their cocktail was the Mai Tai. And the their their Mai Tai was pink. <laughs> nope, not doing it. Nope, no, no, nope, not not going there. So uh, I, I've managed to avoid an Applebee's Mai Tai. Um, yep, and probably will forever avoid the Apple the Applebee's Mai Tai. If I'm going to Applebee's, I'm probably ordering a hard cider, maybe a rum and coke, maybe a gin and tonic. That's good. That's my sixteen dollar, you know, the equivalent of the Lost Lake sixteen dollar Mai Tai. So now I'm going to do my equivalent of the forty dollar Lost Lake Mai Tai. And this is going to be the expensive guy. This is going to be the one where I pull out some stops for it. And there, there's only one glass that I can use for the upper end Mai Tai glass. And you might have noticed, maybe, right, right there, yes, that I'm wearing the button. I am wearing the button, right there. It says so. Uh, it doesn't actually say on the hat anywhere. I've got a sticker up there, a patch and a sticker. And here's the mug. We're going to use this one because, yes, my tie till I die. All right, so we're going to use that. We are going to do this exactly the same way that we have done it in the past. So we are going to take shaker. We are going to add half ounce of Orgeat. There are some cocktails where you make them often enough. There are some cocktails that you just you make often enough to where the ingredients list and the proportions just become. Mm, sorry, happy place. Um, second nature to you. For those people that have an inclination toward tiki, I guarantee you the mai tai is going to fall into that category pretty darn rapidly. One ounce lime juice. By the way, if you had any doubts, no, these limes were. This lime juice was squeezed fresh this afternoon. There we go. Lime juice. Half ounce curacao. Half ounce curacao. Right there. Doing remarkably well. I was uh, a little tired before we started this. Not quite with it. I was uh, I was looking forward to doing this with my ties, but I just went the energy level wasn't quite there. So I'm I'm feeling better now. Hmm. Maybe it's just the rum talking. You know, I should just drink more rum and less champagne. I think that's that's what it works out to be. Limes in there, orange Prosecco. curacao's in there, and the ore shots in there. So all we need now is rum. Okay, so what are we going to do for rum? We are going to reach for a Clement, but we are going to go a little deeper into the Clement Pantheon. And instead of using the VSOP, we're going to use the XO. The XO, the XO is clearly a sipping rum, but we're going to use it. And we're to going to go mai tai. to make our expensive Mai Tai. And the ingredients here aren't going to cost me $40, but... Oh, oh, that's so nice. Okay. An ounce of this. An ounce of Clement XO. Being a little careful here. There you go. Ta-da! This back in the box. And now, what are we going to do for our Jamaican? I could do a split base like uh, we did with the the, um, the Lost Lake Mai Tai, the second Lost Lake Mai Tai, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go with a Jamaican rum that I know has all the funk that I could possibly want in it, and I'm not going to dilute it with anything else. I'm not going to dilute it with a Barbados or anything along those lines by using a blend like the OFTD. It's pretty dry. It is not a blend of different Jamaican rums. This is this is a Hamden distillery. It is a single cask. This is the Golden Devil that I got from K&L uh, Spirit Distributors in San Francisco. 
they bought a cask, they bottled it themselves. There were only X number of bottles of this on the planet. I have three. I had three. I now have one plus this. This is exceptionally yummy. Very, very funky. It will give me all the funk I want. It's aged. Oh, oh, oh that's so. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Sorry. Hold on. I'll be in my bunk. That's so good. Uh, this is aged nine years. And we're just going to go a full ounce of this. If I'm going to treat you to a really high end Mai Tai, I'm going to give you a rum that you can't get anywhere else. And there just aren't. When I got the last of these bottles, it's two years ago, three years ago. So I, it is. They are out. They are out. It is not available. There were 273 of these bottles, and I had three of them. So yeah, I like this stuff, as you might tell. They do have a 12 year now. My wife joyously points out that they have a 12 year version of that. To which I can only respond, okay, I'm fine with that. We know people in San Francisco. I can have it delivered to their doorstep. I <laughs> almost forgot. Lime husk. There we go. Okay, let's do this again. One more time. Shaking for all it's worth. Okay, this rum, the, the Golden Devil rum that I was just using, so Golden Devil is the name they use for any of their single uh, cask rums that they've bottled themselves. It's just their label. But oh, this, I could smell the funk coming off of that rum as I was shaking, just coming around the edges. Oh, it's just so amazingly yummy. All right, so Dirty Pour. What do I mean by a dirty pour? It means you're using the same ice that you use to shake it. If you strained this and put it over clean ice, well, that's not a dirty pour. That's using, ah, excuse me, that's using clean ice. Mint, we need mint for this. I'm just, you know, I'm gonna reuse this mint. It's here, I've got it. I'm gonna smack it around again. Wake up, wake up. Little Susie. There we go. Still smell? Oh yeah, definitely. Still get the minty smell off of that. Minty smell. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so this is the extra special Mai Tai. And we're gonna use an extra special Surfside Sips. Straw Thulu. Straw Thulu. It's gonna go in there. Sneak that in there. And we're gonna give this a try. Like I said, I've not made this before using this particular ingredient. So this could just be a really expensive failure. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> but uh, we're going to give it a try. Or I'm going to give it a try. And then we'll see if I get any more of it. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> he shoots. He scores. <laughs> the, the, so up to this point, I have used the Zameka. I have used the, 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 the OFTD. I've used the Appleton Signature. I've used the Smith & Cross. This is a whole different level. The, this evolves. So I'm still tasting the Jamaican rum. On, on, yeah, it's still there. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's. <sighs> I can't make many of those. I don't have a whole lot left of that. But oh, that is, that is exceptionally good. I could play around I a little bit. I truly love you. Mm -hmm. I will let you have that cocktail after you have some more of it. <laughs> Would you like the rest of this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I will finish this. <laughs> Not a problem. I could play around with the agricole component in here. 
Um, I might try the La Favorite in here and see how it works, but that's that's well nigh that is that is an exceptional cocktail. And it goes to prove that if you use exceptional ingredients, you can get exceptional cocktails. You can blow it using exceptional ingredients. This time we didn't. It's sometimes expensive to experiment. Not this time. This works. I like in this. Mm. Oh. Dang. Oh, that 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 just rocks. That is. That is so good. I like the Golden Devil on its own. I like you know, just taking a glass and putting a rock in it and drinking it. It's also 62.7%, so it's a little on the stiff side. But um, that's a that's a mighty fine Mai Tai right there. I'm liking that. I don't know what the Ray and Nephew 17 version of that Mai Tai tastes like, but... I imagine it tastes kind of like this because this is this is the Mai Tai. This is Mai Tai means the absolute best. So, yep, that's the best that I can do anyway. I think with the uh, with the Mai Tai at the house. So there you go. Well, I'm... no, no, no. I think this is probably the best. I think the Golden Devil would be a better rum for this than the Samaroli. Yeah. Um, the Samaroli is too subtle. The Golden Devil's got a little. Smack you around that is necessary for the cocktail. I think this this works. So what did you think? Um, working through the Mai Tais. Did this inspire you to want to go out and have a Mai Tai? Or make a Mai Tai on your own? What rums do you have that you want to put in a Mai Tai? Let me know. Oh, I see Cam saying, um, hope to make you cocktails on... Oh, no, that's Star saying, <laughs> oh, Cam, hope to make you cocktails on Molly someday. Yeah, that, that, that'll have to happen. I may have to bring a care package of rums with me in order to make that occur, but it'll happen. It will definitely happen. <laughs> Dave, it's like, inspired me to come for a visit for a Mai Tai. Well, if you come for a visit, why have them on Mai Tai? Let's play around. I mean, I've got a hundred rums here. We can play around with different kinds of rum ingredients for Mai Tais and see what we like. I almost made, instead of the OFTD, I almost used the Dr. Bird. I have heard really good things about a Dr. Bird Mai Tai, so I may have to do that at some point. We've been online for right at an hour. I'm trying to keep these right about an hour instead of going into like the hour and a half that some of them have gone to in the past. Knocked you out four cocktails or one cocktail four times, something like that. So there we go. There's four different Mai Tais going from the open the doors first day at Lost Lake, Appleton Signature Reserve and Duquesne, right? Mm -hmm. um, to a, yeah, there aren't that many bottles of this rum left on the planet, Golden Devil and Clement XO, Pooch's Home High End Mai Tai. That's really good. So there we go. Um, that's, that's the gamut. Here, have some Lost Lake rum. Give this back to me. <laughs> I can get more of the Lost Lake rum. I can't get more of the Golden Devil. So, oh, I have one uh, one last thing I should mention. Well, of course we can get more Lost Lake rum because, yeah, we're part owners. <laughs> so, truth in advertising, we own some shares of Lost yeah. Lake. That's it. That's all. We're not part owners. We own some shares in them. They went. They went public. We said, yes, please, we like your rum. We want to support you. And mm -hmm. so we're doing that. Uh, what else has happened yeah. this week in the cocktail world for us? Oh, yeah. Celery bitters. It, it finally happened after a couple of weeks of steeping nicely and being and shaken on a daily, daily. basis. There, here is celery bitters. This, this is not all of the celery bitters. I just poured off some. I have a much larger container of celery bitters you really don't need a whole lot with bitters and this this is this passes i mean this is a pretty tasty little celery bitters i mean i'm not sure what uh, what else to say about that Let's see you notice how like i can get like a little cup here in my canned I don't mm -hmm. yeah i don't know anyway smells like celery and some other herbs and spices and oh, that's good that's good 
Oh, that definitely. That'd for... make a nice uh, gin and tonic. Uh, oh yeah. Bitter. Yep. Anything that you want a savory bitter for, you want to bring out the vegetal mm -hmm. flavors of a botanical gin. Yeah, that would that would work really nicely. Last little story. Once again, I've been watching How to Drink with Greg something or other. I can't, can't remember his name. I put a link to his page earlier. Right. And Greg has a herb container that he uses that he loves. He says he keeps mint forever. Which we have put on the Lovecraft cocktail wish list on Amazon. Right, right. But I looked at what that container was. And it has a lid, and there's a water reservoir at the bottom. And when you pull up on the lid, there's a small platform that lifts the mint up uh -huh. or whatever other herbs you have, such that you can get them and pull them out of there. So that right. only the stems are actually in the water. And I think this is a really nice idea, especially if it's going to keep mint for a couple of weeks. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then I looked over and realized that I own like way too mm. many French presses and went, well, now, wait a second. If I pour some water in the bottom of a French press and I cut some mint and stick that in there once I've added the plunger to this, then if I lift the plunger, I, I get mint. I've got an air vent here because that's the pour spout. I do have to shove the leaves up underneath this a little bit. But um, we're going to give this a try and see how well this works because this is free. Because... <laughs> I buy uh, French presses at garage sales right. to keep you in a minimum of six French presses. So here's the deal. Ping me back on this and how well this works. And I will let you know if this, if this works out. Because if yeah. this works out, there you go. There's a nice way of storing herbs. And you can do any herb in here. Because you can get herb. French presses at garage sales for like pretty pretty one much to nothing. three bucks. Yep. And if it turns out that the... The this plastic piece is problematic. Great, you know that's a pair of pliers. We'll solve that problem. So yeah, I, I I have high hopes for this. We'll see we'll see how well that works. I may do some experimentation whether we want air getting to it or not getting to it. I I don't know, and we'll store it in the fridge and and see how well it works. So there's there's our experiments. So Finished what, one experiment. Celery bitters started another. There you what go. I learned this week. I took a French 75 class. They did a French 75 both with gin and with cognac. Yes. And a couple earlier versions, which were nowhere near as good. I, I knew that the French 75 has been made with both gin and cognac. Yeah. I, you I, really prefer the gin? I absolutely prefer the gin. Yeah. Yes. I like them both. So. Um, I did not realize, though, that splitting the base was a thing. That yeah. Splitting the base between gin and cognac was actually a thing. I also didn't realize that the original 75 did not have any champagne in it or any yeah. sparkling. Prosecco. We made ours, we, we with, made ours prosecco with Prosecco because that's what we, we keep really on hand. We Prosecco. And yes. Yep. And, you know, they're okay. So some of the history of the actual artillery piece was maybe a little off. Don't really care. This is, a, this is actually the history of the cocktail. Right. Not they so were much cocktail the artillery experts, piece. experts yep. not. Um, yep. And when military I military history. So okay, so why is the French 75 important to us is because well, I work for a firm that does defense studies and they've asked me on a couple of occasions to suggest cocktails for events and I keep suggesting the French 75 because it's it's named after an artillery piece. I mean, how how awesome is that in terms of connection between yeah, I should have another drink of this. Between what I do and what I do, right? Because I do both of those. So there you go. We've had fun today drinking French seventy fives and learning about the cocktail, the French seventy five. And we've had a lot of fun making my ties. Eventually, in in twenty twenty one, having some other people, uh, uh, guinea pigs for that experimentation. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think that's that's the plan. Love you all. Thanks for tuning in, and we will say bye bye. Bye bye. Thank See you, you next week for. Helping us my tie one on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think that's that's the that's the line.